Bowtie is an ultra-fast, memory-efficient, short-read aligner geared towards quickly aligning large sets of DNA sequences or reads to large genomes. We like Bowtie for single-end realignment. Two versions of Bowtie are currently available, Bowtie and Bowtie 2. Bowtie 2 is not a direct update of Bowtie and should be thought as a separate program altogether. Some of the key differences between Bowtie and Bowtie 2 are as follows. Bowtie can only perform local alignment of reads, while Bowtie 2 can perform both local and end-to-end -end or gapped read alignment. Bowtie is optimized for short read lengths with a max read length of 1,000 base pairs, while Bowtie 2 is optimized for longer read lengths of 50 base pairs or greater and has no max read length. Bowtie does not allow reads to overlap with ambiguous characters in the reference genome, while Bowtie 2 can. Bowtie can support color space reads, while Bowtie 2 does not. I will discuss in more detail what the alignment options are for both Bowtie and Bowtie 2 and go over basic examples of how to run each of these programs. Bowtie has two options for controlling local alignment of reads to a given reference genome. These are the dash V and dash N options. Dash N is the default setting in Bowtie and controls how many mismatches to allow in a given seed region. This seed region starts at the 5' end of the read and the length of which is dictated by the dash L setting, where L must be greater than 5. Using the setting dash N0 dash L10 may produce alignments as shown in this example. This setting may be useful for cases where your reads have a significant drop-off in quality scores at the 3' end. The other alignment option in Bowtie is dash V, which controls how many mismatches to allow across the entire read. This can be set from 0 to 3. Using dash V may be more suitable in cases where read quality is relatively high across the entire read, as Bowtie will ignore quality scores when using this option. In addition to setting either the dash N or dash V alignment option in Bowtie, which controls how a read can map to the reference genome, you can also set how Bowtie will report back read alignments. In some cases, a read may map to multiple locations in the genome. This might occur when a read originates from repetitive sequences like the telomeres or from highly similar sequences that occur between gene families. Reads that map to multiple locations are considered non-unique, while a read that maps to a single location would be considered unique or to be uniquely mapping. Bowtie has several options to control how alignment is reported. These include the dash K option, which controls how many alignments to report for each read. The default setting for Bowtie is to report one alignment per read. But if you set this number to say three and a read had three valid alignments, it re would report all three. Conversely, the dash A option would report all valid alignments for each read. And the dash M option prevents the reporting of reads that have greater than some number of alignments. So in our case where a read might map to three places, if M was anything less than three, no alignment would be reported. To only have uniquely mapping reads reported, set M to one. And lastly, the dash capital S option will have bow tie output read alignments in the SAM format. And this is the option that you should be using when running bow tie. So now we're ready to run Bowtie. Remember first, you have to index the reference genome using Bowtie build. Now here I'm showing an example of the Bowtie usage statement. I think this is rather cryptic, but we're gonna break it down into each section. So first, you have to set all of your options. Um, for instance, either having dash N or dash V, any of the other alignment uh, options that we discussed. This is followed by the reference genome index name that you set for the index using Bowtie Build. Then you add your uh, read files, and depending on 
the type of file input that you're doing, you have to format it a specific way. And Bowtie will uh, assume that your read files are in a FASTQ format. To use any other type of file, like a FASTA, you have to set the appropriate options. Lastly, you then name the uh, file that the alignment will be written out to. So the most basic default run, uh, command line setting run of Bowtie would then look like this. Start with the command Bowtie, have our dash capital S option to have Bowtie report to a SAM file. Then the index name followed by your reads and the name of the SAM file. Now I've included this additional component that's underlined here. This will allow you to capture the air, standard error output from Bowtie. We strongly recommend using this when running Bowtie, especially when running it in the background or in a job queue. Standard error, error reporting uh, is very useful. It will provide you with information should your Bowtie run fail for any reason, or should Bowtie run to completion, the standard error file will contain important information, like how many reads map and how long it took to map them. If you were mapping pared end reads, this command line would look like would then look like this, where we use the dash one and dash two option to designate our two separate read files. Now we are ready to discuss Bowtie 2. Remember, Bowtie 2 is not the same as Bowtie. Bowtie 2 can perform gapped alignments and has two alignment settings, local and end to end. Bowtie 2 uses a scoring scheme based on matches, mismatches, gap opens, etc. to identify valid read alignments. And Bowtie 2 is considered to be faster and more sensitive for reads of 50 base pairs or greater when compared to the original Bowtie. The default alignment setting in Bowtie 2 is the end-to-end -end alignment. This can be thought of as global read alignment as Bowtie 2 will try to align the whole read to a location in the genome. As we see in these examples here, we can have an alignment where the read has a three nucleotide insertion or an alignment where there's a two nucleotide deletion and a mismatch. Now, depending on how you set your parameters, Bowtie will score each of these alignments and then determine which is the best one. Conveniently, Bowtie 2 provides you with a number of predetermined parameter settings that you can choose from. These are the very fast, fast, sensitive, and very sensitive settings. The default for end-to-end -end is the sensitive setting, and the parameters are shown here, where capital D determines how many extensions to try for a given seed match and capital L dictates the length of the seed for multi-seed alignment. The other alignment option of Bowtie 2 is the local alignment. This is similar to how Bowtie, the original Bowtie, would perform read alignment. However, Bowtie 2 will perform soft trimming or clipping of reads, as well as include gaps in the alignment. So in this example here, I'm showing a case where a read has both five prime and three prime trimming. Again, there are predetermined parameter settings that you can choose from that are specific to the local alignment. Those would be very fast, fast, sensitive, and very sensitive. The default is sensitive local, and the parameters are shown here, where capital N dictates how many mismatches are allowed in the seed region. And like the original bow tie, we can, we can control how read alignments are reported back to us in bow tie 2. So the default is to report a single alignment per read. However, you can have bow tie 2 find and report all valid alignments for a given read using the dash A option. Or you can use the dash K option to set how many alignments to find and report back per given read. 
Now we're ready to run Bowtie 2. Again, you have to index the reference genome, and you have to use Bowtie 2 build to do this, as Bowtie 2 indexes are not compatible with the original Bowtie indexes, and vice versa. Again, I'm showing an example of the Bowtie 2 usage statement. The general setup is the same as the original Bowtie, with a few um, details, detail changes. In the case of listing our index, you have to use the dash lowercase x option to set that, as well as the uh, designating our output file. So Bowtie 2 will output in the SAM format, but unless you designate a name for your output file using dash capital S and then the file name, Bowtie 2 will report to standard output and then you have to capture it. This is just a more straightforward way of designating your output file name. So following this setup, our most basic default setting run of Bowtie 2 would then look like this. We begin with the command Bowtie 2. You can choose local or end-to-end -end alignment. Designate the index name with the dash, cap, uh, dash lowercase x option followed by our reads and our output file. And again, we're going to capture the standard output from Bowtie 2. Now, if you were running paired end or mate paired reads, this is what the general setup of the command line would look like, where in addition to using the dash 1 and dash 2 options to designate our separate read files, we also have to use an option here in the beginning to designate the orientation of our two read files. So in the case of traditional paired N, we would have one set of reads in a forward direction and the second set of reads in the reverse complement orientation to the first set. If we were running mate paired, they might be in the, they would be in the same orientation, so we would use a different option here. This video has discussed how to use both Bowtie and Bowtie 2. Remember, the difference between these two aligners is that Bowtie 2 can perform gapped alignments while Bowtie does not. And as a last reminder, we strongly recommend that you capture the standard error whenever running Bowtie or Bowtie 2. The file that these aligners will output is in the SAM format. And this file can be used with a number of downstream applications. But as discussed in video one, you should first use SAM tools to convert the SAM file to a BAM file.